Folks, and welcome to another episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. I am your host, Bennett Tanton, and today we sit down with Nick Franz from Frag Out. Is it clothing company? Frag Out Clothing Company. Um, I just had to make sure, you know what I mean? Because some people it's Frag Out Clothing, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Frag Out Clothing Company. He is a, uh, a United States Air Force veteran doesn't make him any less awesome than any other veterans just saying right it makes um, me super awesome man it makes me, it makes me want to aim high brother <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying so nick welcome to cigars and sea stories how are you today brother good thank you for having me on <laughs> anytime man so talk to me about nick franz all right man it's uh i mean i got a pretty basic story i grew up in detroit um and everybody knows how detroit is now so a Mich- uh, michiganer a michiganer you know i was going downhill when i was there you know um so i joined the military joined the air force did uh 13 years as avionics uh mechanic on heavies so i worked uh kc 10s and awacs nice and i was uh, big, a military big, big aircraft oh yeah big ones bigger, bigger at least yeah and then um Let's see, I was a MTI for like four and a half years for basic. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, Marines, Army, it's like drill sergeant, drill instructor. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I did that for a while. It was pretty cool down in San Antonio. And then, uh, you know, I was at McGuire, my last duty assignment in New Jersey, and came down with the fibromyalgia. So I got med boarded. The yeah. Fibro. Yeah, my joints hurt and shit, you know? <laughs> Stuff. Got you. No stuff. I apologize. No, no, you're good. Shit, right. damn cocksucker, motherfucker. Say whatever. You want. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're good. Um, yeah. So you know, I was getting out, and you know, I thought after 13 years in the military, like no problem, I'd get a job. Uh, I'd transfer my GI Bill benefits over to the kids. I'm like, oh, oh shit. Um, They're gonna be waiting for me off base with all kinds of shit. Yeah, man. I right? thought it'd be awesome. Yeah. You know. And, uh, I don't know, 400 resumes later, I was like, got three shitty ass offers and I was like, all right, so I guess I'm gonna apply for voc rehab and, uh, go back to school. So, uh, that's what I did. And then, uh, while I was there, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, screw these assholes. Won't give me a job. I'm just going to start my own business, you know? So where'd you go to school? I went to Drexel down in uh, Philadelphia. Cause that's where I'm, I'm at now is in Philly. Right outside Philly. Right outside Philly. Yeah. Are you like North? west of philly or yeah it's about 45 minutes northwest of philly is where i'm living got you i lived down in that area ish for a while i um well i worked in wilmington delaware okay uh, so the other side of philly right and uh but we used to i used to drive up that way because i'd go up to coatesville okay pretty often uh and then uh um ah shit what's that it's just north. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's in your neck of the woods. King of Prussia, that area. Right. Stuff like that. So, I gorgeous area, gorgeous country. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of farms, a lot of hills. Yeah, lots of horses, man. That yeah. was pretty cool. But anyway. Yeah, Pennsylvania's all right. I'm kind of sick of winters. Like Pennsylvania. That's what I like to call it. Because most of it's Pennsylvania, <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's some crazy yeah. outback shit. Unless you're in Philly or like Pittsburgh. Right. Eh, maybe Harrisburg. Eh. Eh. Right? The rest of it's pretty damn rural. Yeah, it's it's country, man. It's country. That's why I, I call it Pennsylvania. Just saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've driven through the state more times than I can count, and uh, it drives me crazy. My kids are like, and this is no disrespect, but they're like, I hate Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> because it takes it's, it's like a four hour drive through Pennsylvania, at least going north to south. It takes oh, a while. Yeah. I can only imagine going east to west. I'd want to. Yeah, I drove to Pittsburgh once and it was like a five hour ride. <laughs> Inside the state. 
Inside the state, yeah. I didn't even make it from border to border. Who, man. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, then there's nothing spectacular. I'll be driving. I'll be driving through Pennsylvania next week down the Pennsylvania Turnpike, which is not oh. a very nice road. But no, anyway, not at all. <laughs> Pennsylvania Turnpike. I'm going to be waving as I go through on my way to the Outer Banks. Oh, nice. So, anyway, I don't want Very to gloat. Cool. I don't want to gloat on the air to anyone. Yeah. Man. I'm going to try and make it down there one of these days. Hell yeah, for sure. All oh, nice. So, all right, so you said screw screw the man after Drexel. Yep. And decide, now what did you study? What was like your major? I went for business administration, uh majoring in marketing. Okay. So, I mean, the thing with school is, is they teach you like the fundamentals, yeah. you know, they, they don't teach you the hands-on, like this is how it's actually done, you know, so, so I got the fundamentals out of the way. Right. Um, but, you know, it, it helped me stay alive because they're they giving me the housing pay every month. True, true. You know, That's so good. I could start the business, uh, which I bootstrapped and still afford to live every day, mm-hmm. you know. Right. So I don't regret going to school. I think it was a good choice. And, uh, you know, it got me to where I am right now. Awesome. So frag out clothing. Tell yeah. us about this. Tell us, tell us the origin story. So, so I was, I was angry, right? Like I, my transition out of the military, I did not enjoy it. It wasn't good. I, like I, I'm not a combat veteran. So, you know, I don't have the issues that go along with that, but I, I just was not happy being out. I didn't want to get out. It was too early. So like we were decided on names. And so we went with frag out clothing because, you know, you take a grenade, you got a room full of bad guys, throw the grenade in there and you kill every last motherfucker in the room. Right. Right. That was, a, that was our punchline to it. So now it kind of morphed though into having that mentality of like the grenade, the grenade does not care about going in that room and taking care of business. Right. And that's, that's the mentality we promote, you know, most service members, you know, uh, law enforcement, first responders, you know, when, when danger is present, which way do they run? You know, they run towards it. And, and that's kind of what we're all about at frag out. You know, we do promote patriotism and all that, but, but patriotism is kind of expected from us, you know, like, why would you not be patriotic? Like, do I really have to absolutely patriotism on you? You know, so we, we stand, it's a little more than that with us, or with me, you know, it's, I want to promote that mentality that we have, um, you know, running towards the danger and not away from it, you know, kind of mentality. So that's kind of how we, how I design the shirts, you know, um, and how I kind of promote it. Right. So why, why clothing? Well, I looked at a, a lot of different things and Anybody that has ever tried to start a business, it costs a lot of money and nobody wants to give you money unless you have money. Right. So I, unless you're like making money. Right. 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 I mean, yeah, if you, if you already like kind of started a business and you're, or you you have a really good job that you're making a hundred thousand a year, you might get a loan, you know? Um, But if you don't have like collateral or anything where I was, it was basically, you got to pay for it out of your own pocket. So I was looking at things that I could do um, that I could, you know, bootstrap myself and there were not very many. Um, But this one, I I decided to go with apparel because it still keeps me connected to like the veteran community. Right. Uh, It keeps me connected with people of of the same mindset that I have, you know, like regardless if it's danger or, you know, you're going into a job interview, whatever you're doing, you just kill it. You kill everything that comes in your path. You know, not literally, because you're not going to get that job, you know, but figuratively you want to go in there and, and kill everybody in the room, you know? So I figured I could express myself and stay connected to the veteran community with apparel. And so that's what I did. That's what I decided to go with. So it's been, you've been since when, since last year? No, May hits two, three two years. years ago. Two, three years ago. That's three years. Yeah. Wow. So doing, doing Okay. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, Making growing. it, right? Yeah, I'm doubling every year, you know, uh, top line revenue. Um, so that's awesome. You know, I mean, obviously the first two years I was in school, so I couldn't really dedicate, you know, full time to it. Um, but now that I've, I've, I'm done with school, 
I can just go at it full time and it's, it's really picking up. Um, cause you know, I do both my branded apparel, like frag out apparel mm-hmm. and then I do custom stuff as well. Got you. So, um, I don't know if anybody out there listening has heard of the gallant few, but every year they put yeah. on an awesome event called run ranger run. Mm-hmm. Um, it's for the month of February, put team of 10 together and the team has to run a, to- a combined total of, uh, 565 <laughs> miles throughout the month. Right. Great event. Um, I've done their shirts the past two years. Cool. You yeah, know. We know, we know Carl Monger. Oh yeah. He's yeah. a good dude, man. Great dude. Hey man. That's so, awesome. That's a great event. Yeah. So, you know, anybody out there, you know, that you have a event, nonprofit, you know, just a business in general, and you want to go with a veteran owned company to make your apparel, you know, you can come right to me and get it taken care of. Yeah. That's like one of their biggest fundraisers of the year. Oh yeah. I think they're probably, I don't know, over 200 grand so far, I think this year. Oh yeah. It doubled from last year. That's like over double. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a great event, great cause, great nonprofit. Um, and you know, like where I came in to help them out is cause I'm fulfilling every one of them. Right. So every week they drop all the registered orders on me <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I print and ship them all out. Now, now do you run, do you do your own printing or do you like, drop ship i now you might no. now did, just give us the evolution did you start printing right away or did you do the drop ship thing for a while or you know no, what i'm saying no no i i'm not that guy i am uh an all-in kind of person no That's matter awesome. no matter what you have me do i'm going all in uh so i went and bought screen printing equipment sweet um, so like drop- you just went like balls in. <laughs> yeah like oh yeah man i go i go deep so I just went, I dropped about seven grand on equipment, uh, started watching a shit ton of YouTube and just practice, practice, practice until I got it right. That's awesome. You know? And yeah, just still doing it. Still, I'm still in my basement actually. Um, it's, it's a nice finished basement. It leads to the outside. So I'm not like in a, in a hole in the ground, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. But uh, yeah, still in my basement and I don't, I don't plan on moving out of it until I outgrow it, until I absolutely have to. Right. Well, and why would you, right? Yeah, why would I? Why pay the extra rent and everything when I don't have yeah, to? I like, um, I like all the, I, especially like the Punisher stuff. Thank you. Yeah, it's the Blue Line. Um, yeah, it's one of one of my best selling shirts right there. So what's funny is like there's a local police department here in the Syracuse area that has that exact, the Punisher with the Blue Line. Yeah. Uh, that Punisher sticker on their cop cars. Really? Yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> they have it with the bullets and the Glock in it? Or is it no, no, it's just it's just the it's just the um the solid Okay, okay. Uh head the solid skull with okay. the with the blue line. Um yeah, and that's on their that's on their cruisers. Isn't that funny? That's crazy. It caused some controversy in the area, but I thought you'd like to hear that. <laughs> I think like, what do you mean the punisher? Um, <laughs> It's my brother-in-law works for him, so it's pretty funny. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. And they've even got like patches on their arm. Yeah, it's they they their 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 bosses, the lieutenant and the and the chief are like, yeah, we don't care what the you know what people yeah. say. We're going to do this shit because it's about you know support and the whole thing. So right on, man. Pretty neat. <laughs> so when I saw your T-shirt a while back, I was like, oh shit. So I showed my I don't know my brother-in-law. I think's got one. So pretty funny. That's awesome. And then of course the Mattis, the chaos actual shirt <laughs> for me is uh um pretty awesome. Yeah. I appreciate Brandon, that. Brandon Marine and all. I'll get your address when it's over, I'll send you one. Oh, you're the man. So yeah, so my my co host who's not co hosting tonight is um he's from Michigan as well, Michael Penny. Okay. But he's from Midland. Okay. Um, which is like, you know, Dow Chemicalville. Right. And Illuminativille, as I like to call it. <laughs> but anyway, we won't go down that road. <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah, there's some weird shit going on in Midland, that's all I have to say. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what else besides t shirts, what have you got? Like so, the normal stuff, or do you have anything that's like that, like uh, is frag out? You know what I mean? Like, like something that's like signature, sort of. Other than the the t shirts. 
So all the apparel, t-shirts, tank tops, um, hoodies, that's all frag out branded stuff. Um, after that, I mean, like, like I do like some little stuff like koozies and paracord bracelets, like, you know, just little stuff like that. But then I try to team up with other small veteran owned businesses, um, you know, to, to help them grow as well. Got you. Uh, you know, I teamed up for a little while with uh, counter straight coffee. Yep. Um, so I, know. The coffee. I, know. <laughs> I know Mr. Butchery. Oh, yeah. Good. But I mean, the problem with that with me is if I don't sell it, yeah. it's sitting on a shelf and it's coffee, you know? Yeah, so, and that's no good. No bueno. So, you know, it's, it's hard with items like that. Um, I do sell barware as well um, from Lucky Shot. You know, they do like the 50 cal bottle openers. Oh yeah, they're the dudes too. The don't they have like a like a hand blown shot glass with like a three oh eight in it or something? Absolutely, <laughs> that's a badass. I gotta buy one. So. Yeah, so I got those. I got uh, the whiskey glasses coming in and the wine glasses, all with three oh eight in them. That's cool. So yeah, those are really cool. You got three oh eight keychain bottle openers. You gotta be careful with those. though, where you go, they give me a hard time at Disney World. <laughs> can't be getting on a plane like what the fuck is that in your bag mm. yeah so you have to be cool. careful where you take the stuff but they actually made um a 30 millimeter they do 30 millimeter shot glasses but then they did a 30 millimeter flask so like what like the brass like like yeah, the 30 so millimeter took, uh casing yeah so they took you know the a10 shell 30 yeah. millimeter yeah. they take it and cut it down so it's about I mean, it's a big shot glass. You know, it's like a Marine Corps size shot glass. Probably about three ounces. Right. It's like a, it's like a, yeah. Holy shit. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a good time. But then they took the brass, the whole brass, and built, like, out of, like, I guess it's aluminum or stainless steel projectile that unscrews. And you can fill it with, you know, it's just, it's a flask. No way. Whatever you want. So give us your website right now. Just because I want to go to it too. While we're yeah, everyone can go check it out. It's uh, fragoutcc.com. Okay. And yeah, you can just Google it too if you want. Frag Out Clothing Company. Uh, it's all over there. Oh, shit. Look at those things. Those freaking shot glasses. Those are badass. What? Yeah. Uh, I'm out of the 30 mil right now, but I got them coming in in the next couple of days. And those will come in. I sold out of the the flask as well That's really cool yeah those are cool man but yeah if people follow me on facebook too if you're especially in like the northeast area like um north carolina up to like i don't know up to like harrisburg mm -hmm. maybe up to like allentown area um follow me on like facebook i always post uh, different events that i go to as well okay um mm -hmm. i try to do a lot of local ones to support like uh local nonprofits and local organizations that are doing money to, you know, doing stuff to raise money for, for uh, veterans, you know? Right. Um, so you can always find, I always post stuff like that where I'm going. If you, so if you want to come out, check out, check things out in person, come hang out, whatever. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm just looking. Sorry. All right. So, um, so what, so, so you got that. So you go and you support as much, obviously v veteran owned and uh, veterans as you can in the area. Um, what else do you do though? Just business. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, on the, on the side of the business, like you'll see some companies, they'll support very specific, like we're going to give 10% to this nonprofit. Yeah, you know, got you. Um, I don't do that because I feel like it scares away other nonprofits. Yeah. You know, like I do a lot of stuff with the gallant few and like, it's awesome. You know, like I have them in my brothers in arms page on my website. Um, but I don't want that to scare away anybody else. So you, know, I I don't see you have a Spartan pledge shirt too. I do. So do that's, that up, uh, that that's uh Boone, right? Um, yes, sir. Boone Cutler. <clears throat> so and, that, oh, and 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 other people too but you know that shirt is specifically for the gallant few any of them i sell the money goes to all of it goes directly to the gallant few okay oh yeah i see it down on the bottom there. you know cool yeah but so. any you know any nonprofit, like as long as they're helping you know veterans law enforcement first responders Got i'm it. really happy to help out in whatever way i can you know um 
went and helped out with an event, uh, run for one or run as one. It was like Team Rubicon, Team Red, White, and Blue. A couple other nonprofits put it on, you know, and it was a great event. You know, just went and helped out. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know, That's awesome. So, other than working, um, I am doing Bunker Labs um, cohort this year in Philly. It's in Philly. So if anybody, if nobody's heard of it, Bunker Labs, they have them all over the country, but they're like um, entrepreneur accelerator programs. So if you have an idea, you can go, you know, get involved with it and they can, you can kind of figure out if that's what you want to do, if it's the right thing to do, or if you already have like a small business, you can do it and they'll help you grow it. Um, they usually have like a ton of great connections, um, ton of great information to share. Um, really up until I started with them, I was winging it. Right. That's, right. that's not good. Um, so or, now I or have, it's better not doing it, but winging, yeah. it, <laughs> winging it, winging it's hard, man. Yeah. So now I actually wrote down a plan of attack on how I want to grow and you know, they'll assign a mentor to you. Um, usually very successful people, uh, successful veterans, you know, who've gotten out of transition or are very successful yeah, for sure. So, um, the mentorship. so yeah, I mean, great organization. Um, I would definitely highly recommend that to anybody, um, that's thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. And I mean, anybody think about becoming an entrepreneur, you can, you know, uh, email me, whatever. And I would be more than happy to sit down and talk to you. Uh, I mean, I would not call myself successful. Um, maybe I am, maybe I'm not, but I've, I'm that kind of person that there's always more work to be done. Right. You know, there's always room for improvement. So, um, you can always ping ideas off me. I'm not going to steal your ideas. You know, I'm always willing to help a, a fellow veteran out. Awesome. Good stuff, man. So, um, oh God, I had another question. Shit. <laughs> oh, so, um, like, uh, I see that, that you also do like a podcast vlog blog thing. Um, you still doing that? So no, I did it for about three months. Um, and you know, it was just Frag Out Radio and I was showcasing mm -hmm. different veterans, uh, who are doing good things in the, in the community. And I did it for about three months. It went all right, but it, I just wasn't happy with, you know, not only viewers, but the quality that I was putting out. Yeah. So I kind of put it on hold for right now until I can figure out what I really want to do, you know, going that path. But um, the, all the videos are up online. You can check them out on our YouTube channel or they're all on Facebook. They're all Facebook Live. Um, so you can see the people that were on it, see them talking. And they'll give you their their entrepreneur story or you know their story on how they succeeded um but there's so many out there it's it's really hard to compete with that it, i know you know <laughs> considering so. the show you're on i get it i totally yeah. understand um and i've got a whole nother podcast network too so it's you know i get it man it's it's tough and it's like how do you differentiate yourself yeah. it's also like that with the clothing and you know like coffee and it's like how do you with everything how do you how do you differentiate yourself right so yeah. that's that's kind of the challenge oh absolutely innovative within these spaces so yeah. so that's what's kind of cool i i like your idea of not like supporting just one nonprofit, um uh you know and things like that so just kind of making it a little different instead of cookie as cookie cutter as it can get you know yeah i mean i mean it, it's like i don't i don't do it for, to make money. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't put on there like, Hey, this is my social cause. Cause you know, everybody, you know, to be successful at all in a business, you have to have a social cause nowadays, you know? And I don't want to just put something out there to be like, look, I have a social cause, you know, like I, I truly yeah. actually want to be involved in the veteran community and want to, to help any way that I can, you know? Right. I mean, I can't run myself broke and homeless. You know, so I, I can only do what I, what I can do, but you know, I'll do as much as I can. Yeah, absolutely. So of your, um, I, yeah, I saw that you, uh, interviewed, well, we're part of the heroes media group. So I saw that you 
interviewed um, Adam Bird and Patty Catter, right? Oh, yeah. Adam Bird is, I mean, both of them are awesome. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah, I'm actually friends with Adam. You know, we talk all the time now, <laughs> ever right. since that interview. Yeah. He's an awesome dude. Heroes Media Group. Um, you know, definitely go check them out. Uh, there's tons of podcasts on there. Heck yeah. Um, like this one. Right. And, um, you know, go check them out. They're, they're awesome. So, yeah, man. Um, so what else? What else do we have? Give us a C story. You have any C story? It doesn't have to be an actual C story, like, <laughs> like from like the Navy or the Marine Corps. It's just a like a a no shit. There I was. All right. Everybody's got one that, <laughs> that can be funny or whatever, man. It doesn't matter. But that's right. what the show's all about. So. So you want to no know shit there I was story, no huh? No shit there I was. All right. So uh, my first duty assignment, right? I was going, went to basic training and in basic, they have you fill out what they call a dream sheet. So you list like eight bases you want to go to, right? So mine were like Hawaii, Southern Cali, you know, warm tropical areas. That's what I wanted. So, you know, I, I graduated. Anything but fucking Michigan, right? Yeah, yeah, fuck Michigan. I don't want to go back there. You know, <laughs> but uh, I get to tech school and I'm about a week out from, you know, graduating. I'm like, man, where am I going? So I go check. Oh, orders came in. Lady hands me the paper and she's like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to Elmendorf AK. I'm like, what is oh, that, Arkansas? Fuck. Oh, no. What was Alaska, that fucking baby. Arkansas? She's like, no, that's Alaska. I'm like, no, nah, fuck, no, it ain't. I'm like, it's Arkansas because I'm not going to Alaska. She's like, oh, you're going to Alaska. I'm like, shit. So there I am in Alaska now. And, um, you know, everything in Alaska is outdoors. Um, I grew up in a city, so now I'm in the outdoors. And, like, I fished in Detroit. You know, it's cool. But I'm not a big hunter, you know, stuff like that. So my buddies are all like, come on, man, you got to go fishing. We're going to go, you know, drive down there fish a little bit, sleep, then wake up the next day and fish again. So I'm like, all right, fine. We go hiking out in the woods, like maybe like, you know, mile down the, the river, quarter mile into the woods. We set up camp, fishing, fishing, not catching anything. I'm like, well, I brought a case of beer, so I'm going to get drunk. So we go back. Now there's four of us now. One guy stays fishing. The other three of us, we're going back. We get drunk because we didn't bring any food or anything, of course. And um, one guy passes out. One guy comes back with a fish. We're cooking it. He takes off. And all of a sudden, I hear this, like, it's like sticks breaking and something walking. I'm like, what the shit is that? And I look, and there's, like, a path going out in the woods. And no shit, two grizzly bears. Yeah, baby. Maybe, like, yes. 50 yards away. And I'm like, shit, man. I'm like, what the fuck are we supposed to do right now? And when you first get to Alaska, they do this, like, half day of training on what to do in the wilderness. And so these dudes throw their arms up and they're like, you know, whoa, bear, whoa, bear. So what do I do? I throw my hands up in there and go, whoa, bear, whoa, bear. My buddy's, and my whoa, buddy's bear. still sitting there cooking a piece of fish. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, freshly caught salmon. So we're like, I'm like, shit, man. I'm like, we had a pocket knife and like an ax that wouldn't even cut wood. Like we were totally screwed, man. But they, they ended up taking off and so did we. Um, yeah, man, I'll tell you what, you run into grizzly bears in the woods, uh, it's scary, man. Hell yeah. Well, I didn't, so, all right, so, full disclosure, out of Elmendorf, uh, this is back in the 90s when I was in the Corps, <clears throat> we did a drug, in, we ran a drug interdiction mission, and we were billeted out of um, the fourth recon barracks that were at Elmendorf, right? Right. Um, in the, is it Chugach? Chugash, is that how you say it? The national forest that's there. I know what you're saying. I don't remember how to pronounce it. It's no. the C H C H U G A C H National Forest. All right. We were running like uh we were looking, people grow weed during <laughs> yeah. summer up there, you know. So summer, yeah. Yeah. So we were we were doing that and whatnot. So we never ran into any grizzlies, but we ran into some moose, bro. They're huge, man. And uh, it was a mama moose and some babies, uh, a baby. And, oh, bro, I thought we were going to have to smoke her, which would, <laughs> which would be bad. But, you know, um, holy shit. But I love I love it. I mean, I, I can say I love it. I, I liked visiting up there. Uh, I was there for a month. And, oh, my God. 
didn't yeah. get dark. It didn't get dark the whole freaking time. We were like playing freaking volleyball at eleven thirty at night. It's crazy oh, yeah. as shit. So yeah. Oh yeah, man. So like, Elmendorf, dude. That's fucked. It's a it's a legit excuse to call and say you're gonna be late if there's a moose between you and your car. Oh yeah. That's like, crazy. It, that's a legit excuse. Yeah, man. I, well, I, I do remember partying in Anchorage though. That was pretty that was pretty legit. Like people think, oh, it's fucking Alaska. No, man. No. People get down in freaking Anchorage. Uh what was that strip club? Shit. ABC? Yes. Alaskan Bush Company. Bush Company? Yes. <laughs> that place. Holy hell, man. <laughs> we fucking Oh, anyway. There's some shit there. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, man. You can find whatever you want in there. Oh my God, it's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. That's like serious strip club. That's like like when Marines say strip club, a lot of times it's like the driftwood, like out of like Camp Lejeune. And right. I'm sure there's a plenty of counterparts over in like Camp Pendleton, but ABC's legit <laughs> legit strip club. Oh, yeah, man. Who like, they like fly women in. Oh yeah. You know? Holy like there, my buddy came up with his dad, and we we took him there. And I mean, his dad at the time was probably in his late fifties. And I mean, there was a chick there. She had like literally bush wrapping around the outside of her little underwears. Jesus. And uh, I mean, ah. it's gross to me, but I mean, he hell was, yeah, ah. he was in heaven. He was oh, like seventies heaven, man. He loved it. That's crazy, <laughs> madness. Oh, Holy yeah. shit. So, so yeah, man. So you were stationed all over the freaking place. So from Elmendorf all the way to when you got out to New Jersey. Yeah. So I went Elmendorf. Then I went to San Antonio, Lackland. Yeah. And then up to Elmendorf. A whole nother animal. Oh yeah. But that's like Brassville too, right? There's like, Oh yeah. You know what? Let's be honest. Every air force base is Brassville. There's freaking so many damn officers in the, in the air force. Yeah. The the other base down there, I can't remember what it's called. It's like North North San Antonio. That's like all brass. Jesus. Like, like we dodged it. I mean, I was enlisted. We dodged that place like it was a black hole, man. Yeah, I uh I worked as a civilian on Tyndall Air Force Base for a while down in Florida. Okay. Uh, in Panama City. And uh that's where North you know, yeah, we have Northcom now. Uh, right. The Northern Command. That's where the Air Force headquarters for Northcom is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like one of those bases where there's like, like five generals. Oh yeah. You know, like three. There's like two, three <laughs> stars, and, a, and so you got everything that goes along with that. It's like holy shit. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that was definitely. And we have F twenty twos there. Oh yeah. So, so you definitely had a lot of brass around yeah, those things. That shit was crazy. It, those those are some badass aircraft, though, I have to say. They'll make you respect the shit out of the Air Force when you see those things freaking flying right. around. You're like, holy hell, thank God they're on my team. Thank God. Oh, yeah. Those were, when I was in uh, UAE, those came rolling in. And, like, I worked on the flight line, so we'd see them taking off. But we'd, you know, we'd be, all be out there gawking at them. They're so and loud. do some cool shit for us, you know, like vertical takeoffs and shit. Like, oh, yeah. You know, like straight up into the clouds man those things are wicked they are I, and like elmendorf though you've got 15s at elmendorf right yeah which are still badass aircraft Ooh, yeah. the 22 is just like phew, holy shit anyway they'll, they'll smoke the 15s man they'll, they oh smoke yeah they smoke the one. shit out of them I, I remember reading an article about the um like the final like testing phase of that and i think they literally put like eight f-15 charlies up against two f-22s oh yeah and the six of the <laughs> six of the f-15s died before they even saw the oh yeah years. yeah it was just madness they probably had like 25 percent of their shit it turned on oh yeah you know it's oh, get that's just crazy it's insane but i'll tell you what man i've been to um paris island and camp lejeune all right for marine uh, base and those were shitholes. They are shitholes. All right. When I was at Keesler Air Force Base going through tech school in Mississippi, they moved us out of the dorm, the, the old dorms into new ones that were just built dorms for us. 
and then they condemned them, and then the Marines moved into those. <laughs> they condemned them, and then yeah, they were sort of like, these are condemned. It's not oh, safe to be in them. Jesus. You got to get out of them. And then a week later, the Marines were living in them. Nice. All right. Um, I'll tell you what, the Army cannot talk shit. I went down to Fort Bragg. Yeah. And that is a nice ass base, man. See, I was in the Marine. I, I, all right. So I was in full disclosure. I was in the Marines for four years and then I did six in the army. Okay. So I was a Marine in the army. Right. Um, and yeah, like I was at, I, I was stationed at Fort drum, which is kind of a, that's, that's how I ended up here in upstate New York. So, okay. but Fort Bragg, there's some shit down there is no joke. I mean, but that's like, yeah one of the premier, you know, army bases in the world. There it is. It's Fort right. Bragg, you know, Bragg, Benning, even though parts of Benning are complete shit still, um, right. you know, but Fort uh, lost in the woods was a shithole. Right. You know, I did get to drive a tank while I was there. Uh, it's one of those bridge tanks. You're right. Oh shit. Like the ones at the big, Bridge, fucking yeah, bridge yeah, comes bridge off like folds right. out in front of them. Yeah, it wasn't crazy. like a badass Abrams, you know. Like, <laughs> I wish it was, but it wasn't. <laughs> but still, I got to drive a tank. I don't care what anybody says. That's awesome. You know, can't take that from me. So, all right, man. Again, give us all the uh, contact info. Where can we find you? All right, you can go to fragoutcc.com. That's my website. Um, I'm on Etsy, Amazon. Uh, you can find social media. It's uh, you know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram um, at Frag Out CC or at Frag Out Clothing Co. Um, on social media, so you can find me there. Give me a, a follow, and I usually keep. Uh, I don't. I don't blast out a ton of ads on social media. I try and keep it light or informational. You right. know. Yeah. Uh, on there so I, I don't put out a ton of you know product stuff on there i don't like to blast people with it because i don't like to see it either in my news feed um i like, I like to blast the shit out of everything <laughs> but anyway i do put it out there though you know every occasionally um so but yeah check it out it's all military humor you know that i like to put out there um and yeah man, that's about everywhere you can find awesome. me if you want to shoot me an email, just shoot me an email at nick at fragoutcc.com. Awesome. Me. Yeah, so we'll put all these links up on the show notes and everything like that. And Yeah, man. Cool. Now you're at part of the family. Part of the freaking Cigars and Sea Stores family. <laughs> and we'll freaking, I'll blast that shit out for you. I appreciate it. Hey, yeah, let, me, let me know too when you put it out and I will blast that out as well across yeah, all my sure. channels. It'll be uh, probably within the next two weeks. So it'll be good. All right. So there it is, folks. Another episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. We'll talk to you soon. I will